What's going on, African sports fans? It's your boy, Chris Kosizi Strawn here from London, England, and the Peacock Gym with the champ, the natural, Larry Aquandayo. What's up, boy? Nothing much. How you doing, champ? Doing well. Doing well. You look good, man. You look like you're ready to go beat something up right now. 100%. <laughs> Can't wait. Tell me, you got, you got a fight coming up? Yes. What are we talking about, um, man? Who are you fighting? Actually, I haven't even looked him up. Um, his name is Nathan Ardy, I believe. Uh -huh. And um, he had a few fights as well. I honestly don't check his record. I'm going to do my homework. Mm -hmm. um, still got about three weeks right. to go, so yeah. You worried about to... what you have going on right now and your training? Exactly, but also I have to do my homework on him and make the, the job a lot easier for me. That's mm -hmm. the plan, so I'll see what he do, what things he's good at and what he's bad at and, right. and take um, some mistakes and make him pay for it. Right. So that's, that's the plan. Where are you in the training process right now? I'm everywhere. Mm. I'm everywhere. I'm doing literally everything. Mm -hmm. um, I'm ready to go. Yeah. So that's, that's, I'm just ready actually. I'm ready to go. So you've been ready since your last fight. Yes. And also I was training for a fight for a whole year last year. Um, with the hope that I will fight in Nigeria, which didn't eventually happen. Mm -hmm. So I have been in the gym for almost a year training for a fight that didn't. Oh and man. I know, spot. So I have to take this out on, on my next opponent. Yeah, I love that. Wait, have you fought in Nigeria before? Oh, I started off in Nigeria actually. Uh, I started when I was 12. I represented Nigeria at the Olympic qualifier, I represented Nigeria at the Commonwealth Games. Uh, Manchester 2002, mm -hmm. I, had, um, I was one of the elite fighters there for years before I relocated to, to England. Right. So, so man, we got to get you back to Nigeria. What does it take for that fight to happen? Well, um, you guys are already doing it, to be honest. We don't have anyone doing it and giving the, the exposure to the African athletes. Right. And you guys are doing a great job and I'm sure but the people, as soon as we start to embrace our own and support our own, everyone will jump on, on board. Okay. What are you looking forward to with this with this time around? Well, just another win, um, because I didn't have any fight last year, so this is just a, only a six rounder. Mm -hmm. Just a warm up fight, then jump into um, a title fight. I Currently, I'm the IBF European Champion, so i um, looking to fight for another title, and um, a significant title, and God willing, by the end of the year, knocking for the world title. Get I to believe. fight for world title this year. I believe, man. How do you feel going into this fight without fighting for a year? Do you feel rusty at all? Never. Mm. Never that. I live in the gym. My career has been a roller coaster. Um, for the people that know me, I was in and out of the ring due to some family issue with my daughter's health, but I'm always in the gym. So, and having to train in the gym like this, you can never be rusty. There's too many talented fighters coming in and out from different parts of the country and from different um, parts of the world as well. People come down here and you get quality training and having a great trainer like Martin Bowles and the rest of the team, you can never be rusty. What, what does your Nigerian upbringing have to do with you being this champion today? Well, uh, I was born and brought up in the army barracks. My dad was a Nigerian army. Uh, you have to, you have to fight. Just, that's just, you just have to fight. You have to protect yourself. There's no such a thing as bullying. You either fight, it's either sink or swim. Mm. And um, I naturally can fight, yeah. and um, the, up group, uh, the upbringing there also helped me in the ring. Mm. Sometimes when I look at my opponent and see how far I've, I've come, you know, and uh, I was living on the streets at the age of 14. The only thing that got me going was boxing. Mm. Uh, my parent, my mom disappeared for about two years. My dad passed and um, you know the only thing that stopped me going was boxing. So sometimes I look at my opponent and I just think this is this is a sport for you but it's not for me. This mm. is a life. You know, this is this is real. And um, for me to get to where I am now from the slum to be here, 
I must be doing something right. So I put everything in. That's a crazy story, man. You, you're not you're not out there fighting like everybody else is fighting just for the sport and it's all fun. Yeah, like you yeah. out there. No. Yeah, when you I say just, this is your life, this is really your this, life. This is real. my life. This is my life. This is what got me out where I, where I was, and um, this is what got me to where I am today. You know, um, if you look me up, you get I get a lot of uh, good comment from people that I don't even know what I'm doing, how good I am, but people always say I still think I've got so much to learn. I'm not even there yet, mm -hmm. you know, but having to hear people that know you from nowhere and give you a good compliment, you know, that makes you kind of like sit back and look back from where you're coming from and um, see and working towards your goal as well, you know, so yeah. yeah. There's so many young people that are in your situation that, like you said, come from the slums, family situation is crazy. Yep. What do you tell a young kid? Stay focused. Mm. Um, in life, we have been programmed that you have to pass math and English and science and these. You have to be great in school before you can become somebody in life. Or you're playing football. If you're not good at football, if you're not good at math, automatically, they're very really knocking to the side that you can't achieve anything in life. But we all have talent in one way or the other. And mine, my calling was boxing. I would I always say to people, you don't not everyone's gonna be academically smart, but you can do stuff with your life. Whatever you're doing and you think you're almost good as someone else, just keep pushing, you'll you'll get there eventually. Don't give up, don't get distracted, just stay focused. How did you find this passion? Um, getting beat up by my brother, my <laughs> older brother. We fight regularly, you know, for no damn reason. I don't know <laughs> why, but now I know why, you know, and um, having to have uh, a elderly brother that we always have a tear up, kind of like give me that edge to start. I feel like that was my actual trainer from the start. I learned from the hard way by getting punched in the face. Yeah. So, um, then growing up in Nigeria where in school people will pick on you randomly and um, that's how I fell in love with it. My uncle was actually a boxer as well. So I started boxing without letting my parents know because they want you to be a doctor or a lawyer or what not. But I started boxing, my parents actually saw me on national TV this, back then. So and that was it. My mum was like, you know what, I'll let you off because I saw you on TV, but not on the crime watch. So that was it. So it kept you off the streets. Exactly. Are there any African foods right now that are fueling this machine right here? Um, funny enough, I normally have pounded yam every way. After my weighing, I've pounded yam. For example, the IBF European title is different from a regular title. When you do the official weighing a day before the fight, which is everyone else uh, normally do, but the day of the fight, you have to go and weigh again so you're not 10 pounds over the fighting limit. So, I just have pounded the arm and that just hold me to the next day, you know. And um, now I'm, I switched to vegan. So at the minute I'm still having my, my pounded yam yeah. with, with all the, the stuff, but mm -hmm. just not animal product, right. really still and all, so. What does the vegan diet do for you? I had so much injuries because it's crazy how people don't have a clue what you put your body through as, a, as an athlete not only boxing alone, but for example, sparring last Monday, I still have a swollen hand from blocking a punch. Oh man. So imagine getting punched in the face or reap and all that. So you have all of that uh, inflammation and apparently eating a lot of meat and dairy doesn't help with that. So uh, being a vegan helped me with my weight. I don't have to like kill myself to make the weight and that also. Um, prevent me from having unnecessary injuries and, and, and help me heal properly, wow. uh, quickly, quickly. So, and so. you've, you've, I mean, obviously you felt that, you feel yourself 100%, recover. 100%, my recovery time was brilliant. Mm. My, for example, I did 10 miles run last night before sparring this morning, and I felt like I haven't done nothing. I won't say it's because of the vegan, but I just felt I recover. Um, 
quicker than usual. Mm -hmm. And um, yeah. Man, so no suya for you? No. That's crazy because I love it. I mean, they love, I grew up. My parents, my mom have my mom have a restaurant. She used to sell oh, really? a, a street market, a okay. street food rather. And um, you know, I I was brought up in that meat eating family mm -hmm. kind of. We doing the festival period and all that. But honestly, I didn't I didn't miss it. Plus, my missus is um, vegan as well, so oh, make yeah. it a lot easier. So it's easy, it makes sense, and you're recovering better. Exactly. So you represent London. And you represent Nigeria. I represent Nigeria first. First and foremost, you represent Nigeria. I represent Nigeria first. Why is it so important for you to fight in Nigeria? Well, I started my boxing career in Nigeria. And just to show to the young youth that's growing up there, to let them see that if I can come out of there, they can achieve their goal mm -hmm. as well. We wait on the government, we wait on people, that we have that entitlement um, mentality. Sometimes we just have to take the, the whole thing into our hand and just keep grinding and pushing forward. Plus my children were born here, they haven't been in Nigeria, mm. but if you call my son, and say, oh, what's your name? Oh, I'm, I'll be like, oh, I'm Marion. He'll be like, no, my name is Ayo. So he's proud of where his dad is from and also, I always use Afrobeat as, a, as my the, the, the line map for what we do. Um, years ago, we, we all only listened to um, artists like 50 Cent and all of that. Mm -hmm. Nobody, we don't, we don't appreciate what we had, but as soon as we start supporting our own, look at Afrobeat artists, look at um, Nollywood actors Crazy. and actresses, yeah. we're all over the place now. Yeah. As soon as we support our own, the globe supports us, we will support us. Right. So I'm trying to bring that to Nigeria as well. And we have a lot of people doing that right now as well as I speak. Right now we have people doing it. One of my mate here, he's called uh, One Bang. Mm -hmm. he, he, he doing the boxing, going back to Nigeria, having to, to fetch talent and search for talent and, and help the young youths and just give them that focus, something to focus on. But I can't do it on my own. I have I have mouth to feed as well, as much as I would love to do it, but having to go back home and having support and again people behind me and um, I'm sure Sky will be the, the starting point for all these young generations coming up. Man Larry, I believe in you. I'm excited to see you get this next belt. 100%. And we got to get you back to Nigeria to get it, baby. That's the plan. My man, it's Thank been you. a pleasure, baby. Thank, Thank you, you so man. much. Thank you. My man. I'm Chris Kosizi Strong. That's the natural Larry Akundayu. This is Africans in Sports. You out of here, baby.